Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the let's go to the book of Galatians. I have intended on looking at something else, but the Lord led me this way. Galatians chapter six. Galatians chapter six and verse numbers twelve through fifteen. I would like us to look at. I think we're all somewhat familiar with the book of Galatians. I find myself referencing it more and more. Seems like, but Galatia it was a a province in Asia Minor. It was the Greek area. I did look at the history a little bit, and the Galatian people were originally Celtic people, Gauls in particular, who had mixed with the Greeks over time. So they were a very Hellenistic people. If you know anything about the Hellenistic Greeks, they were big on their gods and their goddesses. And mm -hmm. They were very pagan type people and right. full of wickedness. But yet there were some believers there. Yeah. In fact, multiple churches is how Paul addresses this letter. But the vast majority of this letter is how they had been turned away to another gospel. There were some there trying to put them back under the law. And he's addressing those in verse number 12 here. He says, As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Amen. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. By whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither the circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Amen. I believe the thought that I led me this verse, or led me this passage is verse 15, is our identity in Christ. Mm -hmm. No, we'll begin by looking here in verse 12, though. It says that there were as many. Here he's referring to these Judaizers here, as they're called, the, those Jews who are saying they need to be circumcised and keep the law. As many as desire to make a, share, a fair show of you in the flesh. Well, this fair show means they were, wanted to show them off, they wanted to be on display. Amen. Right. And that's what the Judaizers were all about. They were not really concerned about actually keeping the law, as verse 13 tells us. But man today is much the same. He wants to make a fair shoe on the flesh. He wants Amen. to be on display, if you will. You know, it's a, we have a big push today about being proud of who you are. Mm. We'll get to that here in just a moment. I'm going to get ahead of myself. But these here were constrained or compelling these to be circumcised. And he says, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. The real reason for being circumcised was that they might get along with the Jews. Right. They didn't want to be persecuted, it says here. So, are we willing to compromise with the world? So we might su not suffer persecution. Right. Mm. I'm afraid many professing Christians are. Many so-called churches have already went that way. Amen. You know, I, whatever may be the hot topic of the day is, we shouldn't be willing to compromise just to get along with the world. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. They constrain you to be circumcised only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. You know, a true believer, if we're right with God, they'll be happy to suffer for the cause of Christ. Amen. Yeah. This is in my notes with back in Acts. They, when the disciples were persecuted, they were arrested, beaten. It says they went away rejoicing that they were able to suffer shame for his name. Today. Amen. So are we like these here and willing to compromise to 
get along with the world, or are we willing to stand for the truths of God's word? It may become very difficult one day. So I, wouldn't, I wouldn't answer that question with an affirmative yes, just right off the bat. We might be like Peter and say, I'll never leave the North State thing and mm-hmm. deny him three times. You're right. Mm-hmm. Amen. Verse 13, he goes on about these here. It says, For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, they may glory in your flesh. Okay. It says they were circumcised, but they weren't actually keeping the law. So they didn't have any real desire to keep the law. They were just doing it for a show. Right. In fact, if you look in the previous chapter, verse number 3 of Galatians 5, it says, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Come to the Mosaic Law, if you did one part, you were really a debtor to do the whole thing. Right. Yep, these people were just picking out the things that made them look good. They were picking out what they could boast about, if you will. As it says here, that they may have or that they may glory in your flesh. That's to boast in their flesh. The Pharisees were all about what look at me and look what I have done, yeah, weren't they? Amen. In fact, let's turn back to Philippians for just a moment. I know we've all heard this passage before. But it sums up the Pharisees because Paul was one. Philippians 3, verses 4 through 6. Paul speaking of himself before his conversion, before the Lord saved him on the road to Damascus, it says, Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any man, other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I am more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what these things were gained to me, those I kind of lost. Right? Amen. Paul was about as perfect of a Jew as you could get in his day. Mm-hmm. He had it was all an outward show, wasn't it? He had nothing inward, if you will. But that's exactly what the, the Pharisees were like. That's exactly what these Judaizers were like. They just wanted something to boast about in the flesh. Mm-hmm. Well, that is the natural tendency of man was to boast about something. But say, look at me, look what I have done. They desire to have you circumcised so they may glory in your flesh. You know, not to get too political, but this seems exactly what the Democrat Party does with the LGBTQ crowd. You're right. Amen. They use them to boast about their own selves. I think they've had an eye on the end of there now, too. It's really quite simple. It's either you're a sodomite or you're not, though. That's it. I mean, I guess transsexual might be its own separate thing, but. There's a lot of boasting in the flesh, though, isn't there today? Right. You know, this month has been called Pride Month by our nation. What an abomination to God. Amen. I mean, if y'all should know my feelings on pride already, how we use it very loosely in our society. You know, pride goes for destruction and high spirit before a fall. Amen. This, these six things that the Lord gave seven are abomination unto him. The very first thing he says is a proud look. And in the New Testament, James writes, He resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. Amen. No, we as Christians should not be a proud people. Amen. Amen. But to be proud of sin is even, even more of an abomination. That's what this quote unquote pride month at least originated as. Mm-hmm. And they say be proud of who you are, but really be proud of what you are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Proud of sin. Proud that you're an abomination before God. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I know they don't have a spiritual understanding, but 
I didn't see one that had a sign that said, <laughs> going to hell and proud of it. Mm. What a awful thing to say. Right. No, we, as God's people, we can be thankful, we can be glad, but we shouldn't be proud of us. Mm -hmm. so I, I know I've used the example of that song, Proud to be an American, but we should. But we should be thankful that we were born in such a country that we can worship freely. That's right. We can be glad and it doesn't roll, roll off the tongue the same way, though. Right. Amen. Well, we can glory, but it has to be the right type of glory. That's right. And the word glory means <coughs> boasting. We can boast about the right type of things. But boasting about us and what we are or what our sin, that's not pleasing before God. Let's we'll turn over to Luke 18 real quick and then we'll go on to the next verse here. Luke 18, this is the, another example with the Pharisees. This is where the two men went up to pray. The one a Pharisee, the one a publican. Luke 18, verse... 10. It says, Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. And the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. And this describes exactly the natural man, though, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess. Mm -hmm. It's all about I. That's it. That's exactly what the flesh likes. It likes I, it likes me, it likes to be boasted of and to boast of what it has done. Mm -hmm. and we have this thing in modern society called the humble brag. It's where you try to act humble, but really you're bragging about yourself in you disguise. Mm -hmm. That's really no less than the same thing, though. Well, the, Pharise the Pharisee there, he was full of himself. The publican, he understood who he really was. <laughs> Verse 13, And the publican, standing afar off, would not so much as lift up his eyes into heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. You know, we as Americans, it seems that we can be very arrogant people. But we ought to simply be a humble people. That God has, at least in the past, blessed us so greatly. Mm -hmm. That, like I mentioned, he's enabled us as his people to live freely and to share the gospel, and it'd probably be one of the greatest missionary nations in history. Mm -hmm. That's not something for us to be proud about in ourselves. You know, the, the Corinthian church, they were a proud people too, it seems like. Mm -hmm. We'll turn over there in just a moment. Well, he says back in our text, but God forbid that I should glory, saving the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So God forbid here, he says, was really the strongest negative he could say, that, that I should glory, that I should boast. Right. Really, we have nothing to boast about in ourselves if we really understood who we were. It's who is it that make it the indifferent? Mm -hmm. Or again, another place Paul says, it, by the grace of God, I am what I am. I think even as sovereign grace Baptist, sometimes you get a little bit high minded. <coughs> if you will, that You're right. Amen. That we have the truths of God's word, that we have really the understanding that some others don't have, and that we're some even. Because we're the chosen, we have to be, you know, special people, but really know it's just the grace of God. That is how the Armenians often paint us as we're, you know, we think we're special people because we're the elect. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we give them reason to think that. You're right. Amen. You know, we too often forget the grace which makes us different. It's simply the the pleasure and purpose of God that caused us to differ from any others. 
that we're not just as wicked and vile as the most wicked of men. Mm -hmm. God forbid that I should glory. Like I said, right understanding of who we are, we would not glory. Because there's nothing in us to glory of. Let's go over to 1 Corinthians 5. So this is the particular chapter where Paul is dealing with the man caught in fornication with his stepmother, his father's wife, it says. Right after he tells him what to do, how to take care of this matter, he says in verse 6, Your glory is not good. Amen. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? So they were glorying, and he says it wasn't good. He doesn't really tell us a whole lot about what they were glorying in. It was in their material success, if you will, or if they were glorying, and God really blessed them, mm -hmm. and yet they had sin among them. Right. Certainly, we ought to. To thank God, give Him the praise and the honor when He blesses us. But we also not, ought not to take lightly of sin. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the Laodicean church was kind of like that too, weren't they? they Amen. They said they were rich and increased in goods and had needed nothing. Right. But in reality, they were poor and miserable, and naked and blind, and wretched. Mm -hmm. Your glory is not good, he says. I said, I don't know. Maybe they were like the, I don't know, the Armenian churches that y'all went to, but this is what I seen in some. But I don't know how many souls they had saved that year, how many they had added to the church that year. You're right. Perhaps they were glorying in that sort of manner. But it's not us to add to the church, is it? Amen. It's not us that get the souls saved. Amen. Some water, some plants, some water, and God gives the increase. Or as it says in the Acts of the Lord, as the church daily, such as should be saved. It's the whole point of trying to drive home here is that it's not about us. It's not look at me, who I am, and what I have done. It's look at Christ and who he is and what he has done. Amen. Because he goes on back in our text here and say, God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the only exception he gives to glory in his, to glory in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. To, said, to point to him what he has done. Look what Christ has done. He has, he has died. He has suffered. He has paid the penalty for sin. But I I know we don't have anything to do with the Roman crucifix, but sometimes we shy so far away when we mention the cross. Right. Mm -hmm. But he says the glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not that we should idolize a wooden crucifix. There was no saving power in the wood. What happened on the cross there, that was Amen. perhaps the greatest event in human history since the fall. Yes. You're right. God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. So no, not that you're white, that you're black, that you're Hispanic, not that you're well, a good at your job, that you're a good preacher or teacher, whatever it may be. That's not what we're glorying. We're glorying Christ. Amen. You know, I was going to mention, it seems that you, you can be proud about everything except for being white male or heter heterosex heterosexual right mean, amen so i guess i have nothing to be proud of by the world standards <laughs> really in christ we have nothing to be proud of anyway right we're all wicked in ourselves we were all deserving of hell and yet without the cross of christ we would all be on our way there if not already there amen well, that's what we 
shouldn't brag about it, if you will, is the cross. What Christ has done. Amen. And anytime we're pointing others to ourselves and what we can do or what we have done, then we're not really lifting up and glorifying God. And that ought to be our primary objective. To point others to Christ, not to yourselves. And Charles Spurgeon was a great preacher, but he couldn't save a soul. Amen. You're right. I know God used him highly, and I think we can thank God for people like him, and that we have writings to learn from. And, but I think even he himself would say that it's look at Christ, not look at him. Amen. Yeah. I think one time he even said his whole theology could be summed up in just a few words that Jesus Christ died for me. Amen. Mm -hmm. That was to be our central message. Everyone stands in need of that. The white, black, gay, straight, doesn't matter. They all stand in need of Christ if they haven't been born again. You're right, amen. So there's a lot of identity politics going on in our country today. Without being ahead of ourselves, our identity is in Christ that we've been born again. Amen. And that's what really matters. Including here in verse 14, it says, By whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Well, Paul doesn't mean he was literally crucified. We are crucified with Christ. And he says, Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. No. A right contemplation, if you will, of the cross and understanding of the cross will cause the things of this world to be dead to us. And really, we'll be dead to the world too if we're living such a life. Mm -hmm. They'll reject us and have nothing to do with us. We ought to reject the world, its wickedness is just the same. But the more we come to see the cross for what it was and what happened there, the more we will realize the things of this world are not so important. Amen. Really that's what we're going to do in the Lord's Supper is to reflect on the cross, with his body that was broken and his blood that was shed. Let's go on to verse 15. I want to look at a couple other passages before we close. <coughs> As for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availed anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Mm -hmm. And here is the key. It's not circumcision. It's not uncircumcision. It's not anything that we are physically. It's the new man that matters. Amen. Nope. Brother Larry made reference to that passage where Christ became sin for us. who knew no sin. Even doing so, he made us a new creature in him. He said, old things have passed away, build all things have become new. Amen. So it really doesn't matter what you were before the Lord saved you. It doesn't really matter what you are now if you're not saved. The Lord can still save the most wicked of sinners. That's right. As Paul said, this is a true and faithful saying that Jesus Christ came and the Lord saved sinners with whom I am chief. Yeah. So if he can save the chiefest of sinners, he can save any one of them. Us here are listening today. Maybe I So it really doesn't matter what we are or who we are. It matters if Christ has made us a new creature. Let's turn back to chapter 3 of Galatians. He kind of talks about this a little more in chapter 3 here. He's been talking about the purpose of the law. Uh, really the law was not the means by which faith came. The law was not how justification came. The law was not how the promises were bestowed. And he says the law was our schoolmaster bring us to Christ. Amen. And he gets down to verse 28, chapter 3, and it says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Amen. Jesus Christ, or in Christ Jesus. So race, nationality, that doesn't matter. Social status, gender, none of that matters. It matters if you're in Christ or not. Amen. That's it. 
For the Jews, they thought they were the best. For the Greeks, they thought they were the smartest. But they were really nothing outside of Christ. Mm -hmm. It says bond, that is literally a slave or a servant. Or free, it didn't matter. So it doesn't matter if you're the richest of rich or the poorest of poor. And he says neither male nor female. And certainly, men and women have their roles in society and in Christian life, but yet he doesn't say men more than he says women, or women more than he says men. And in fact, I often see women being more faithful than the men. My dad, you're right. It was the, the women that were first to the tomb. And we could go on with examples of how oftentimes the women were more faithful in scriptures. Amen. <coughs> There's old. I can't even really comprehend all of what the world tries to teach about feminism and then couple that in with the LBGTQ ideology it doesn't really come, it's not compatible, but I'm not going to get off on that. So it doesn't really matter in Christ. Amen. We're all one, he says. Like I said, what matters if you're in Christ or if you're not in Christ? Yeah. If you're in Christ, you're most blessed. If you're out of Christ, you're most cursed. Amen. Well, can consider two verses in Romans real quick. We won't spend a lot of time on them, but... Romans 3, verse 23, I know we all know this one. For all have sinned and come short for the glory of God. Amen. Said so, social status, race, gender, whatever it may be, all that doesn't matter. You've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. All stand in need of a Savior. Romans 10, verse 11 through 12. Here Paul is giving the how to be saved in the previous verses. Confess with the mouth and believe with the heart. Verse 11 says, For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Amen. For the same Lord over all is rich and all that call upon him. Amen. But yes, it is whosoever believes. Uh, I'm not going our meaning on yet. <laughs> I know who, only those of God are, as ordained will believe. But it's still out there for whosoever will believe. Amen. It's not constrained to America. It's not constrained to one race or one ideology. Even. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Amen. God is the same God over America as He is over Africa and Asia. In fact, He's working pretty mightily over in China, it seems like, among the people there. Right. We have it easy compared to them. Well, there is no difference, He says. So when we stand before God, He's not going to say, Well, you're white, you get to go over here. No. It's either you're in Christ and you're accepted, or it's depart from me, for I never knew you. Amen. Amen. And that ought to be our our main concern as God's people. Amen. To reach those that don't know Him as Savior. For all will stand in need of salvation. Right. And in Christ it really doesn't matter anyway. We'll close, close with that thought. <laughs>